vast mateys today we are talking pirate cosplay so before i bring on my lovely co-host and our guest let's roll our credits in an ad I'm too sexy for my cosplay. I'm too sexy for my cosplay. On Cosplay Cafe. Yeah, I'm a cosplayer. You know what I mean. And I do my little turn on the comp floor. Yeah, on the comp floor. Oh, on the comp floor. Yeah, I do my little turn on the comp floor. And I'm too sexy for my cosplay. I'm too sexy for my cosplay. On Cosplay Cafe. And I'm too sexy for this song. We're obsessed with Belle Polk for elegant retro fashion and styles ranging from the 20s through the 70s. Belle Polk is the site for you. Use discount code PSC15 for 15% off. Funky Balls by Crayley is your one-stop shop for handmade magical creations that celebrate all the Pokemon universe has to offer. Available on CrayleyVaness.com. That's C-R-A-Y-L-E-V-A-N-E-S-T dot com. And possibly coming to a con near you. All right. Welcome, everybody. It's been a month since I've been on, so it's nice to, well, not see all of you, but to be here again. I'm Andrea, as you know. And now I'm going to bring on my lovely, lovely co-host, Miss Crayley, half of the Phoenix Sisters. Hello, everyone. It's uh, it's good to be on again. I think I've missed a couple of recent episodes for various health and schedule reasons. It's been, <laughs> been a heck of a year already. <laughs> it feels like your iPad just decided if it wants to okay. be on the show or not. <laughs> so the, the bandana and the eye patch like the strap they're both designed to go over a wig i'll just go ahead and pop a picture up here now so yeah, a wig with these like massive <laughs> braids and stuff like and so it uh i have i have a migraine right now that i've taken meds for and so i'm okay enough to be on the show but like corset and wig sounded like a huge no-go yeah. and so i put the i put the bandana on and i was like what what is all this extra <laughs> fabric it on your head <laughs> yeah and so the the strap, it's all sized wrong, be well, for my head, because my wig, like, I don't think about how big wigs are, because they, they look pretty normal when they're on your head, yeah. but. You never know. Like, I realize how big my Thor helmet is when I don't have the wig on, because it just, I look like a bobblehead. I, like, head. can't get the whole bandana in the frame. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a cat trying to decide if he wants out this door next to me or not. I apologize. My cats run the show. It's fine. Anyway. Now that the cat has stopped running the show, we are going to introduce our lovely, lovely guest. I have known Heidi, oh my goodness, did we meet in 2015? Um, she's also a member of Co um, Cosplay Memphis with me. She is amazing. She does awesome cosplay. It's a family affair with her, but we all definitely know her as a pirate. So let's welcome the lovely Heidi. Ahoy! How's everyone yeah. doing? Other than sitting here warm in a corset, I'm doing all right now. <laughs> you don't always have to wear a corset when you're a pirate. You know that, right? No. It works with this one, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Mine normally has a corset, and I just I said no tonight. So it's good to know I have Heidi's blessing to skip well, the see, corset. Look, um, I wear a vest. I get away with mine's, vest most times. Mine's a vest with a busk. There's no boning in this one, so it's a lot more yeah. wiggle room. But yeah, it makes me sit up straight, and I really feel like slouching. <laughs> it does. It makes you sit up really straight. Very. Yeah. It's it's a lot of. Uh. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Evermore says Yo, this does fantastic to see you again, and it's fantastic to see you too. Hello, Evermore. And also, Mark DeJarnay says, Bonjour, just got home and first show this year I can watch live. Have fun. Mark Wonderful. loves our stuff. He, I think We're I'm pretty sure he's watched back. a bunch of the replays. So oh, yeah. it's so nice to see you live. We we enjoy having the friends of the show get to watch us live, not just on the repeat. Though 
the repeats definitely help us keep going. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, we we wouldn't be able to do it without all the people that continue to watch us that for some reason have for almost three years enjoyed our antics. <laughs> yep. I watch I watch quite often myself. <laughs> and that's why we love it. We we like the people that support us, we want to support them. So here we are. Much appreciated. So let's, let's let's just go ahead and get us started. Tell us how you started cosplaying, Heidi. Well, I actually started cosplaying with my youngest son, which you know, Joshua. Um, he and I started when he was 13 years old. Um, we went to MTAC one year, um, and that's been, geez, 15 years ago. Um, and he was all about One Piece back then. He still is, actually. We still, he oh, hangs are. a, yep, he hangs a One Piece flag on his house, and I have Jack, Captain Jack Sparrow's flag on my house. <laughs> um, but, uh, I just went as a con mom that time. I didn't dress up. Uh, he was doing his thing, meeting his friends. And I just kind of sat in the corner and stayed in one spot while he ran around and did his thing. So, but Tom the next are important. I, oh yes. I enjoyed it. I really enjoyed just sitting I've, been, and I've become a con mom for sure. Yep. Yep. Oh, I'm a con mom to many. Um, not always blood children, okay. but I have a lot of con children. Um, then shortly after that, um, a friend of mine who actually runs a scuba diving um, business called Easy Divers. Uh, they took over Mud Island about, uh, it's, that's been about 10 years ago. Um, and we were part of the pirate school. She asked me to be part of the pirate school. So we took care of all the little kids and showed them true pirate history, not just TV animated type pirate history exactly we showed rigging and how to how to read the stars and came up with a lot of fun games one of our favorite games that we always play when we go out is throwing the rabbit in the uh throwing rats in a bucket i don't know why it's a cool <laughs> thing they love the rats in the bucket game but uh <laughs> that's how that i is. really got yeah that's how i really got into pirating and um from that point on josh did captain jack sparrow he does amazing Captain Jack Sparrow. And once he started doing Jack Sparrow and I did the pirate school, I was hooked. So literally, haha. -ha. Um, so from that point on, I got really into pirating and I love true pirate history, not necessarily just cosplay, uh, Definitely. which is great fun. Um, but I do a little bit of both. Yeah. <laughs> Lord of Spice, aka our friend Derek, says, but did you board a ship with grappling hooks? <laughs> Actually. <laughs> <laughs> you now, never this is an know. Adventurous woman. <laughs> exactly. You never know what could happen. She that might calls. also board your your ship with a horse too. So she might do it off the back of a horse. <laughs> well, yeah, so actually I, I have a good I have a um all the people that want to do pirate cosplay and if you have anything to do with being around little kids you have to have your story together because they will ask you every single question under the sun <laughs> so just about every single person that does um pirating or pirate cosplay or pirate reenacting has a backstory because we inevitably have people ask us our backstory so we come up with this really elaborate backstory so we're ready for questions it happens every time and mine, That's I have you. horses. I have horses in my backstory. Always have. Well, you know, you're in good company with the other horse girls here. So. I am. <laughs> Love the horse girls. I mean, look, my sister's watching. She's a horse girl. She just pulled into her horse show in Tunica for the weekend. So oh, good luck. Family of family of horse girls. <laughs> good luck. Yeah. Good those luck. kids will grill you. Like they will. They they don't care what you are, what character. And if you don't have the answer Look. right off the bat, they'll like, you're not the real one. Exactly. They'll call you out. They will call you out in a second on it. Um, one of the very first pirate pieces is what's really, really cool about pirate cosplay. If you're not doing a specific character, you can do whatever you want. And you could change it as many times as you want. I have got so many costume pieces and I change them out all the time. That's the only thing I don't change out is my hat. I'm very, very partial to this particular hat. It's um, so hat. Thank you. I love it's my a very hat. Jack Sparrow thing to have that one hat. That oh, yeah, hat. yeah, 
And it, it's true just about across the board. Just about every pirate you run into has that one thing. And a lot of time it's it's a hat. It's a, you know, a piece of equipment, a baldric. Josh actually made this for me. Um, so I'm very attached to that. And one of the very first things I had was a sword. And you see, it's got a horse on it. You've got to have a sword. Yeah. Um, how, can so, you, how can you fight for your, your treasure without your sword? Well, believe it or not, this is a katana. I don't know if you can mm -hmm. see that. This is a katana. Uh, and a lot of people used to just totally drill me that pirates didn't carry katanas. Well, how do you know that? Yeah. Were you there? <laughs> so <laughs> I'm pretty sure my story about, about right. taking what they like and using and what exactly. they like. Exactly. Also, there were, so in there my were pirates from the, from the Asian lands. So why not? Oh, a real big one in China was a woman. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. She was one of like the most well-known ones. Yep. And the most, uh, she made probably more money than any pirate ever in history because she took over her husband's, after he died, she took over his, mm -hmm. his entire fleet. And unless and people are time travelers, they don't know if you actually no. carried that kind of sword or not. Are they exactly. the doctor? Huh? <laughs> right. <laughs> you have a TARDIS? So yeah, this I mean, is part of my story. Do. So this is part, part of my story. So yes, it has a horse on it. <laughs> Love that. We love and they'll ask you, oranges. they'll ask you about stuff like that. So yeah, be ready. Evermore says he helped build the pirate ship at Bristol Renaissance Fair, Wisconsin. That is fascinating. I did not know. Oh, you that. I would love to have one of those in my backyard. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe if you pay him for travel and then pay him to build it, he'll come down and build it for you. Um, um, Evermore does these awesome like steampunk builds and like upcycles things to make them steampunk. Yeah. He made Kelly and I these amazing blasters. Oh, um, wow. Nice. Yeah. Nice. we. If, if you search the channel, we did an unboxing. Um, okay. I'll look for it. To Yeah. And like, I, I've been meaning, I've got a bunch of pairs of boots that are like starting to look really shabby. I'm thinking about just giving him like a budget and mailing them to him and being like, work your magic as long as you keep it yes. within this budget. Like yep. you should, you should look up his socials if you're into like upcycling or oh like, yeah steampunk like yep yeah. pirate people love to do that we don't That's necessarily a thing it is we don't necessarily take um or make a lot of people do and a lot of people are very very meticulous about their outfit and make it very period ac accurate um i ever once a year we go to um alabama and we take over a fort in Alabama for the weekend. We actually sleep in the fort and it is true pirate reenactment. They want you to be as accurate as possible. So I have met several people that make their own linen shirts by hand, hand sewn the whole nine yards. So, I mean, you can go to that extreme or you can very much go, you can buy things. Go Goodwill is your friend as we've uh -huh. always, I've heard you always say that on this, on this show. <laughs> Goodwill is your friend. Angel Start there. Pirate. <laughs> Angel, yes. Angel was on the other pirate episode, and that is the queen of going to Goodwill and finding costume pieces and coming up with these amazing costumes. Yeah, that's like, part of the fun of it, in my opinion. It's I mean, coming up with your own were, thing. You were you were stealing, taking things, so it makes sense that nothing's brand new. It's secondhand. Oh. It's a little worn and shabby, and it, it doesn't match. Yeah, they weren't they weren't the king's fleet out there, you no. know, in brand new wool coats. They were stealing from the king's exactly. fleet. Exactly. <laughs> Cause many times on the ship, when the part of the um the treasure, so to speak, um, was clothing. They would ship clothing just like, you know, because they didn't have stores. They would send clothing from England to the Americas. And many times if they got taken, yeah, they took those clothes and they used them to distribute them throughout the ship. So yeah, you had all kinds of pieces. Money wasn't the only thing important on those ships. No, it really <laughs> it might it have been was the, the main important. thing, like all of us. But yeah, many times there's many other things that they took from from the ship. They took as much as they could. Yeah, our friend Mark says can confirm thrift shopping is a cosplayer's best friend. It really yes. is. If you if you're trying to get started, it, it's a wonderful place to start. I mean, oh, yeah. Yeah. I'll, a lot of the leather scrap pieces on my, my Lagatha costume from Vikings came from like leather coats that we found at a Salvation Army yes. for like dollars a piece. Like and got, belts and all that kind of stuff. I got something I got to show you because you and I got to hook up at some point. <laughs> She's like, hold on. 
It'll fit. It might fit in the whole screen. <laughs> yes, because like, oh She's my god, thank baby. you. So like, like I'm a Legatha of that. I'm a. I, I'm. I don't do Legatha, but I fight with her. <laughs> right? Oh my gosh, no, Heidi's a pirate, a shield maiden. She's out clan like agent of the shield. <laughs> You're everything. Yeah. Well, I. You know, you were talking about corsets earlier. Yeah. Um, and not all women pirate have to wear a blasted corset. Um, I prefer personally don't like wearing a skirt. I usually wear pants or um, I don't necessarily. I mean, they're OK. I've never been much of a dress girl. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm very You're much the girl. I'm a horse girl. Right now. You know what? What dresses I really like? Which is kind of funny is those big flipping ball gowns. What is that? Yeah. Why do I not want to dress anytime unless I can wear a flipping ball gown that's just massive? That's okay, the other but, side of it. It kind of fits the pirate maybe era, though. Maybe. Yeah, that's true. I do have one outfit that I wore to a pirate ball. But, you know, that ball gowns can also be more comfortable and fun than it seems like they would be. Like, it all They're kind of more depends air on the condition, you, right? There's a they lot really of are more air conditioned. <laughs> yeah, I didn't realize movement. how cool it is. Yeah, I didn't realize how cool it is yeah. with that big hoop under there. Last weekend, I went from my my Captain Carter to my Bell, and I was dying in my Captain Carter. I put on that Bell, and I just stood there. And Holly looked at me. I'm like, "There's air blowing up here right now." Yeah. I'm like, dude, I'm <laughs> you got a stiff breeze going. It's it's pretty good. You know, you can also just plop that thing over a fan if you get too hot. Yep. <laughs> you can. Yeah. That's, that's why princesses twirl. That's that's natural air conditioning. <laughs> Never thought of that. That makes total sense. You got to think, though, like for a pirate, for a woman pirate, like wearing the pants and stuff, most of them were not showing that they were women. They had to like sneak on board Correct. because people didn't want women on ships. So, of course, they're going to dress more masculine. They're going to wear the, exactly. the vests and trousers and, you know, the looser right. shirts to hide their curves most of the time. If they had well, a corset, right. it was probably, corsets were not outer, outerwear until recently. They're undergarments. That's true. So, That's true. And you're right. Um, many times women on women, women on ships was a big taboo. You didn't bring a woman on ship. It was bad luck. Um, but yet the mast had to be a woman bare breasted because that was good luck. Explain that one. But anyway, <laughs> we're good luck and bad luck all at the same time. I mean, it's very true. <laughs> so, that is true. That is true. But yeah, but uh, for obvious reasons, you could not have a woman on ship with hundreds of men. Um, so but hundreds of there were, men. that's true. And they there were onboard marriages. Did you know that? Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. I've heard about Between that. men. Between men, yes. you would have a partner the whole, during that voyage. It would, that, so there there was such a thing. But yeah, definitely women did not. It was extremely rare. You, of course, heard of the most famous ones. Um, yeah. But they were also some pretty tough ladies. They, they could, you know, take a guy out. And so they respected them. And they didn't have to yeah. worry about other things that most women that have to worry about. Most of them ended up with command of their own ships. Exactly. It had to be tough. Exactly. Women running things. Men, the men just didn't know that the women were running things. There you go. <laughs> we, give it, we, exactly. let, we let them. We let them think. That's it. We let them think it that way, for sure. You know. Although, so. two other benefits to pants on a ship. One, ladders. And two, it's windy. So, like, <laughs> exactly. you can like, grab right on your skirts. <laughs> exactly. And boots are very, a very much a, mis a misnomer. They didn't wear boots yeah. on shoes. Mm -hmm. They either went barefoot or they actually had sandals. Yep. They didn't wear boots because think how slick that would be on on deck. Yeah, no grip. Back th this was not the day of rubber soles. <laughs> exactly. Now they 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 did have boots, but they mainly wore them off ship. They didn't wear them on the ship. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, between your episode and when we had Angel on, we are getting like all of the pirate. We're getting the history, the story, like yep. getting getting all the little in, information that most people don't think about when they watch, you know, the Pirates of the Caribbean movies and read these romanticized ideas. It's like my brother says, he says, Jack Sparrow is the romanticized pirate. Barbosa is more of the real pirate when you watch Pirates of the Caribbean. Yes, I agree with He's, that a thousand percent. Don't get me wrong. I love me some John Depp. We all I love, love me some Captain Jack. Jack Sparrow. I mean, but I read Barbosa. Oh my gosh, Barbosa is the pirate. He is like yeah. top notch. Anytime I th you say pirate, that's who I think of. I think of Barbosa. 
I've read a lot of takes that we're not supposed to think of Johnny Depp as like a historical example of a pirate and that that their nod to it inside is they're like, you're the worst pirate I've heard of. But you have heard of me. (laughs) But you have heard of me. That's right. Also, he's not a very good pirate. He's not very historical. He doesn't do, he loses his ship all the time. Like he's. But you, you know, there's, there's more to his backstory, you know, when, cause you know, he has that argument of people aren't cargo. Yeah. And that's yeah. why he was considered a bad pirate. He wasn't running the slaver ships and stuff. So he's got a moral compass that is in there. Yes. But, and and, and that's probably, they say that's probably why he's always drunk is he, you know, dealt with all these deaths of, of slaves and stuff. And he just didn't want to handle it anymore. And that's not him being drunk on land. That's his sea legs. He can't right, it's just the opposite for him. Land. He just can't. Right. It's the opposite for him. He can't. He has a hard time on land. He's more used to being on ship. So when yeah. he gets on land, he walks like that. But there's a book. There is a book about everything that happened before, and it's like when he it's was a kid cool. and younger. I've I've read some of the stuff because you know, of course, you know, being that early two thousands, you know, twenty something who was in love with Johnny Depp and Pirates of the Caribbean. Everybody bought me all those books and stuff for birthdays and Christmas. And I loved it because it gave you a real story, which was the story of some of these pirates. They didn't want to work for the the kingdoms and the monarchies that were slave drivers and exactly and and everything. So they that's why they broke out on their own. Yep, yep, to be their own men, not that. have somebody yep. else making their their decisions for them. Yeah, and then and there so- are, there are all these other like pirate light like privateers and then you've got like import tax dodgers and smugglers and like so (laughs) in some of my family history um on going way back on the dutch side uh on my mom's side one of the reasons that they ended up having land in north america (laughs) was if they ever had to leave europe after doing too much smuggling and import tax dodging where they wouldn't come up to port they'd come up to like a secret port and then yep. move stuff up the back end of the markets more or less. <laughs> yep. Me so and you would get along lot. great. <laughs> you and I would get along great because, you know, I, I do. Um, I love history. Um, and I was looking into my lineage last summer. My grandmother, my great great grandmother's name is Kid. And I thought, no way. There's no way. <laughs> Excuse me. There is a way. He is my eighth great grand uncle. Nice. You're related to Captain Kid. I'm related That's to so Captain cool. Kid. That's so Isn't cool. that crazy? I flipped out. I kid you not. I totally lost That's it so when cool. it popped up. Eighth great grand uncle. I went, holy cow. Yeah, I was you're like, okay, you were meant to be a pirate. Meant to be a pirate. That's why she, that's why we would get along really well because she's a pirate too. I bet Andrea, if you looked in your history, you'd be a pirate around there. Somewhere. I feel like there's at least something or some kind of very brazen woman in my family's <laughs> <laughs> made my sister and me the way we are. Yeah, other than I mom. agree. You know, other than my mom. Being adventurous. That's that was a big thing about just like when when Captain Jack says that boat is freedom. That's it. That's exactly what it was all about, was freedom. Yeah, of course. He was he was the romantic side of of the the Definitely. pirate. It's what what drew people outside of the the era of piracy, exactly to the stories. But then, like I said, Barbosa is the gritty, dirty, nasty truth. And we oh love, yeah, we and you see, he Jeffrey plays Rushmore. both sides. Yeah. You see, he plays both sides. He goes to the you know goes to the king when he needs to, and <laughs> played for that side when it when it came down to it. Thank you, Colin. <laughs> <laughs> my son bring me asking for parlay i don't know I, I i mean i we have to honor it right that's right, right. Don't that's say right. Parlay. you gotta the, the, so the do you are piracy. are you more are, are you more into pirate history or you do you like more pirate cosplay uh me i just like um it's i like where the pirate stuff brushes up against other stories like right now i'm bombshell ravager where mm-hmm. like in, in the bombshell like world war ii era and <coughs> it was yeah. like picking stuff out of different past eras so right I, I like to see i like to see pirates show up in other things uh, yeah. or like be referenced in other things like firefly how there's that like some of it's western some of it's pirate it's all we like, love us some firefly 
Firefly yeah. is one of my favorite series. I absolutely who, adore Firefly. Who didn't have a crush on Nathan Fillion watching Fire, Firefly? Who still has a crush on Nathan <laughs> Fillion? <laughs> I was gonna say. Yes, we still, we still all, we we stand Nathan Fillion at the cosplay cafe. I mean, come yes, on. definitely Nathan but, Fillion for the win. You know, I I love it though because I like the pirate stories. I love history because I am I am a big big history yes. buff, and of course, obviously, yep. I love cosplay, but. Yep. I also love when it, like, like Crayley says, when it mixes into other stuff, because, you know, I love steampunk. So, of course, I love the Sky Pirates and yes. all of that kind of stuff mixed in there. Treasure Planet. Oh, my God. Treasure, Treasure Planet. Planet. Is so underrated. Yes. So yes. underrated. It so really is. And I used to work for Disney, so I totally love Treasure Planet. And it was um, such a good one. It really is. It, it You're right. It is so underrated. It truly you know, is. I, I, I grew up on the Treasure Island books, the, you know, the Robinson Crusoe and all that because mom bought me all those classic books as a kid. I yeah. love that kind of stuff. Pirate history has been kind of part of my history and it's just it's fascinating. The, it is. The, it really all the is. different sides of it, why people did it, you know, the ones that were shanghai into it, but mostly just like like Captain Jack says, it's the freedom. It's the Good one, David. David gets yes. a pass on that one. <laughs> Damn, I swear by my pretty floral bonnet that I will end you. That is perfect. Uh, oh, I, I, I truly like I, I like the history aspect of it. Of course, any kind of costuming for me is a blast. Um, yeah. Vikings were known as pirates. See, see, we're too, we're still in the pirate thing. It's funny mm -hmm. how, like you say, in so many different other genres, pirates are in there somewhere somehow. Um, Muppet Treasure Island is one of my favorites. I could never get tired of that. I never get tired of that dead gum movie. Curry. Tim Curry Tim is Curry. amazing. Um, if you can, mean that he played himself like a Muppet in that where you know Michael so Caine good. played it straight as could be in a Muppet's Christmas Carol. Yeah, yeah, he was so good. If you ever get the chance, look up Pirates of Penzance with Tim Curry in it. He's extremely young in that one, but man, does he belt it out. And he is amazing. He is an amazing oh, pirate. He does a really good job. Curry. It's Tim Curry. Exactly. Is there anything he, what does he not do? do well? Exactly. What does he not do well? Also in the, the Disney Peter Pan live action remake, yes. the music that they did for the pirates was really pretty. Yes. <laughs> that was the <laughs> main thing movie. I remember about that. I was, I was like, oh man, the, the pirate chants, like really good. Yeah. What kids yeah, um, play pirates in the backyard? Like when we were little. Of course. Um, our big swing set with the monkey bars, we set up on the top of it because the yard was the ocean and my brothers and I are up on the monkey bars with sticks. You know, those were our swords. Yeah, everybody had a sword. You got to have a sword. And it didn't matter right. what kind. Back to the katana thing. It doesn't matter. It's it, But you got to have a story. Do you, it, so, so if you were to um, do pirate reenactment, what would your beginning of your story be? See, you got to think about it. It's a, yeah. it's hard. I'm not yeah, lie. It's I, hard. Love the, I love the woman that had to escape the life that her family was trying to force. I was, on gonna, her. I I was just gonna stories. say, I feel like I'd be running away from an arranged marriage. I just be like, you can't make me. <laughs> raised raised by a dad <laughs> who loved his daughter so much, he taught her the stuff the boys learned. But yep. then he's like, oh crap! Now I got to marry my daughter off. I don't really want to, but I need to. Yep. And she, and yep. he's kind of like helps her sneak out the back. <laughs> I feel like that would have been my dad. He'd be like. You know, we got to play this for face, but there's the back door right. of the church. Let's go. Right. Well, when I got, when I started my pirate story, I was very much me and my boys. It's, it's always been about me and my boys. We love and boys. I do so awesome. I love them dearly. They're, they're, they're everything. They are, thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> um, it started and, and, and being into the history, I am of Scottish heritage. Um, Captain Kidd is from. Dundee, Scotland. So um, my husband also, the, how we met, we, we were in the restaurant business and we bartended. So my story starts in an, a, a tavern in Scotland and my boys get Shanghai and I got to go get them. So that's how my story started. Mama bear. <laughs> yep. And, that, and so I had to leave husband behind to run the tavern and go get my go get my kids. So that's how my my story started, and the reason why I carry a katana is because they end up going through Japan, 
and the emperor of Japan found out there was a woman on board and he wanted to see this woman pirate. So he takes me, they take me in to see the emperor. And uh, I talked to him about training his people to ride horses for warfare so that he is more efficient. And he ends up giving me, this is going to make me tear up. I used to have a big gray mare named Blue. Um, and he gives me her. She is what my gift is from the emperor for training his troops. And so my name is Suki Uma, which is moon horse in uh, Japanese. And that's why I have a moon and a horse on my katana was because of blue. You know, I have a, a big soft spot for the big gray horses, too, of course. I don't know. I miss that girl. I yeah, miss that, mine's, Our mine's neighbor, I mean, he's, he's 28 at this point. So I'm like, buddy, well, yeah. hold on a little longer. <laughs> Blue made it to 30. My grandpa's farm had a, a gray Arabian that I called old gray mare for the longest time. Her name was Kalima, but it's like, <laughs> I, I, right. Great no, name. I, I walk up with an apple and she just like come right up. I just, you know, yep. it's yeah. really my sad. Girl, it was finally passed. <laughs> yeah. My girl was 30 and it was carrots. It wasn't apples. She loved carrots. Squeegee but, likes He likes apples. My my horse, of course, his. I've got the one with the dumb nickname because dad nicknamed him when I had bought him. When we bought him, he was four months old. And his nickname is Squeegee. I like it. It's different. I've never heard it before. Well, because dad, his, he when we put him in the trailer, he kept trying to slide. And his back legs literally went under the trailer. Dad said he just was squeegeed under there. And that yep. came yep. home. That's exactly what you're talking nickname. about. <laughs> but you know, horses get they're like they're like any other animal. They have the weirdest names. Like they their really registered do. names are his registered name is KG's Kentucky Son. What the hell is that? Yeah. <laughs> what is it? <laughs> but, exactly. Blue you know, is Smoky Quincy Dame. I don't yeah, have no my, idea. My <laughs> horses, <laughs> horses QAJ paper names, names yeah. was yeah. Yeah. Queen of Bar Gold. So her name was Barbie, and she had a hot pink halter and a hot pink saddle blanket. Yeah, yep. our dad's mayor of bar gold. What do you? Yeah, dad, yeah that's dad's, weird. Dad's mayor that we lost. She was twenty nine. Her name was Chip and Fancy on her AQHA papers. We called her Pedonk. <laughs> <laughs> she was she so little when we when we first got her. She was so little, and my sister and I showed her, and we nicknamed we shortened it even more to Ponk. And yeah. Misty and I showed her, and. Good Lord, you want to talk about people angry about pulling her out of the kind of rusty old trailer with the rusty old truck and winning every class we walked into. That's awesome. That's an awesome Misty, feeling. Misty Misty literally took her senior pictures with her horse in 93. Oh. That's, that's how much that horse meant to us. She oh. was in my sister's senior pictures. I would have so, done that. I so would have done that. <laughs> so, you know, horse girls. Horse girls forever. Yeah, Misty yep. she popped in earlier, said horse girls rule. Let me put that oh, up on yeah. the screen for a second. I, I think, and well, Heidi, you and my sister would get along quite well. I bet we would. I bet we would. Well, speaking of names, what would your pirate name be? Oh, now that's a good one. I'd have to think about that one. No, all I can hear in my head thinking about it is this Archer reference where Carol Cheryl asks, who am I, Grania O'Malley? <laughs> that's a pretty good one. <laughs> I mean, Grace O'Malley. Grace O'Malley. That's exactly who I thought of, too. Oh, my. Yeah, it took me a long time to get mine, uh, to, to come up with Maris Josephine Hawk. Um, I love it. Hawk Maris, works with you. Well, for many reasons. And that's, yes. that's, I had to stick with that one. But Maris in Celtic, because I'm from Scotland, is ocean. So I'm a Seahawk. Um, and then Josephine, believe it or not, my middle name really is Joe. It's not Josephine, but it's just, it is, it's just Joe. So I pulled in uh, something that's real to me. And then Hawk, I have so many Hawk references in my life. It's yeah. crazy. Um, Hawk Girl is my favorite. Um, so I have a Hawk tattoo. Um, uh, Lady Hawk, I just posted that. It, it just, it, that just literally hit an anniversary. I love that movie to death. Mm -hmm. Um, it's just the Hawks, no matter what I do, it seems like there's a Hawk reference somewhere in my life. Hawks and horses. Yeah. So yep. I the had to stick with Hawk. I have, I have a horse tattoo like on my rib cage. So. <laughs> you know, I've got one on my ankle. Using, you know, using, <laughs> using like your, your, heritage i'm very irish my middle name is kathleen i could use that one somewhere in there perfect yes i was named, I was named for my great-grandmother her name was kathleen perfect and so 
mom and dad, both sides of the family, we're so Irish, it hurts. <laughs> I got a little bit of that too. I got a little bit of Irish in there yeah. as well. I keep more, our, uh, more Scottish, but question. He says, uh, give us a shanty. I don't know any shanties. <laughs> Uh, well, at one right now that's super, super popular, of course, is the Wellerman song. Um, that is a really one that everybody knows. They Especially they were using them a lot in the TikToks and, and, and the reels and everything. They were using the Wellerman song. That is a really good one. Um, but there's thousands and yeah. thousands of different sea shanties. You can actually go on Spotify, put in sea shanty, and holy cow, you're, you're there for <laughs> hours. Something that shocked me because we've been talking about Pirates of the Caribbean so much is that that song in, oh gosh, I think it's the second one where it's like, yo ho, all yeah. together, hoist the colors. I just assumed yeah. that, that was like a really old one. And it's mm-hmm. not, it's like more no. modern. And then Disney, yeah. like that's their version, like their, their version of it. And yep. my husband and I were talking recently about how people still write sea shanties, like new oh, ones yeah. every year. So. There, there are pirate bands out there mm-hmm. because there are so many Renaissance fairs now yeah. and there are so many pirate festivals like Gasparilla every year in January, you go down to Florida and you go to Gasparilla where they actually bring in all the ships mm-hmm. and um, you that get to see cool. all the ships, um, tons of pirate bands that that's all they play is pirate music and sea shanties and then their own stuff, of course, with a little pirate twist to it. But um, there's tons and tons of different pirate. I love the, uh, I'm trying to think of her name. The lady that does the music for Outlander is amazing. She, to watch her just sit and listen, that is such calming. That that instrument she plays is just amazing. It makes great pirate music as well. Um, so yeah, there's many different forms. Um, I, I would love to explore music and musical instruments that they used when they were on ship, yeah. you know, I wondered if that was really something that they had somebody that actually played. Somebody let us time travel so we can find out. I don't want to be there long. No, no, that's a I rough life. Scurvy or anything, <laughs> but you know, I, that's a really rough enjoy, life. <laughs> it's like, I, I do enjoy air conditioning and my nice soft bed. Yeah, when but, we take over the fort in um, Alabama every year, man, we sleep in the barracks, and that. It's a brick building with a door and windows. That's it. Yeah. So there is no air conditioning. And man, it gets hot as all get out in there. I don't see how the guys did it with wool uniforms on. It's a, it's amazing. Ooh. I don't know. Yeah. We are over our halfway mark, though. So we need to do our cosplay cafe and then start getting to submissions. So um, well, and, and show off Heidi's lovely photos. Yes, oh. well, we'll you do got that some of the old ones, weekend, but I didn't send you any new ones. I sent you all the old ones. That's okay. That's okay. You've got yeah, a history. Yeah. We're, we're just yeah, going you know, um, your Kelly history. Kelly uploaded photos for us before we started since she couldn't be on with us tonight. So Kelly is yeah. in, in spirit by uploading photos. I think she even snagged some from your Facebook too. Bye. Um, I miss you, Kelly. <laughs> she's been She's been handling a lot. So, you know, she needed a night off. Totally fair. All right. All right. We, Who wants to go first? We never make the guest go first. No. Look, I'll I'll go real quick because I am not fully. Y'all have seen this. Me neither. We, we both ended yes, up on look. the same bad wavelength today. But Andrea is too sexy for her cosplay. She's too sexy for her cosplay on Cosplay Cafe. Hold on, let me you got to admit, camera. those the rings. It, the corsets, corsets may be uncomfortable, but man, do they make us look okay, good. Look. I'm a little bit of a girly <laughs> pirate. I have a Hello Kitty cameo ring. <laughs> oh, I love it. <laughs> I love so, it. You know, I gotta have I'm I'm a tomboy, but I have my touch of girliness. Yeah, we all do. Definitely. A little bit. And then I'm too sexy for my cosplay. I'm too sexy <laughs> for my cosplay. Oh, and cosplay. Like literally, I just that's that's as far Dude, as it goes so today. Comfy, I was so without the corset, today. without the corset. Oh that my thing gosh! Is really, yeah, really... I mean, with the corset, it's not too uncomfortable because um, Kelly altered if, the corset that you, I wear for this. So yeah. if you wear a corset better, right, they're really but... not uncomfortable. They right. just change your posture and everything. This was even exactly. like a creepy one exactly. that she just made some like mild alterations to, and it got a lot better. So I could spend hours rambling about wearing corsets properly, but that's not what we're mm. talking about today. <laughs> Yeah, but whole another show. Is, there you go. You got you another show going. <laughs> there we it's go. Corset cosplay. We should do that. 
You yeah, should. Well, you know okay, what? You totally we, should. We should probably right. put that in the notes. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. All right. It is like... Heidi's turn to. Oh, show well, us I'm what gonna... a real pirate looks like. Right. <laughs> oh, I don't know about that now. <laughs> this is. I got to figure out what my camera is. This is actually a vest. Yeah. It's really it's a comfortable. Beautiful vest. <laughs> yes. You look. You look very comfy. Um, it's got. Yeah. It, it does have a few um stays in it, but not like a corset. It's more like in the back, the very back for structure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the sides and then up the front where the lacing is. But that's really, this is my my most favorite piece. I, I wear this more than I wear anything because it's just, it's comfortable. We and it, it. you're not, you're sucked in, but not crazy sucked in. You, you got to pillage in comfort, okay? Heck yeah, you do. Heck yeah, you do. But yeah, my one of my favorite pieces is my Baldrick. Like I said, Josh made it for me. And since I'm Hawk, um, all of the findings and everything on it are all feathers. It's beautiful. Yeah, he, he handmade that for me. Um, yes, her her sons are also very talented cosplayers as well. <laughs> I love them boys. Love them boys. Like you said, we love them boys too. We're we're in cosplay Memphis together. They are great I, dudes. They are loving to death. I don't know what I do Ma that. Mama, Mama would wake up, walk the plank. Otherwise, you know that's a. Did you know that's a myth? Yes, I did. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> still fun. To There's threaten. no walking the planks. No walking the plank. It'd be a huge threat to me because I can't swim. <laughs> huge threat to me. Well, girl, we're going to have to teach you how to swim because I used to teach trauma. people how to swim. Trauma when I was little. Um, I can do it. Drown. Me and you can do it. I almost, I almost drowned too. Yeah. I almost drowned too. No. So Mis Misty pulled me out I of could the get pool you do when it. I was like three. I have a pool in my backyard. It's got to be fixed. But, you know, I'm the only sibling that doesn't swim and I'm the only one with a pool. <laughs> okay. Well, we're going to get you swimming. I can teach you to swim. Make I can teach one anybody one. this one. I can. That's what I used to do. I was a water safety instructor in, in college. I could teach yeah. you to swim. Yeah, my yeah. whole family loves to swim. They're all they're all water babies. Even mom, she used to water ski when she was younger. Oh wow. I scuba dive. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah, David okay, McDonald I, says I think David. keel hauling is more terrifying than walking the plank anyway. And thank you. Way. I that. Oh god, yeah. Ugh. Definitely. I don't like to Explain. think about that. Yeah, explain what that is for the people out there who don't know what keel hauling is. It's pretty bad. Oh, my gosh. I'm pretty sure that's when they throw you over the side, attached to a rope, and haul you underneath the boat and back up, isn't it? Yeah, and they yeah, drag you no. over the keel. Horrifying. That's why you keel yeah. haul. All they the, drag you all, all the barnacles. The barnacles. Oh. Yeah, all the barnacles and everything that are the under part of the ship just shred you. Yeah, no, yeah. That's, that's horrifying. If you lived, you're maimed forever. <laughs> you are. Don't you are. Um, I'm trying to think of the seer, the pirate series, Black Black Sails. Oh, Black Sails, yeah. Okay, that's a really rough show. Don't let your kids watch that one. No, that's, it that's is a not rough for show. It is not. It's a very adult show. Um, parts of it I don't even like. Um, but they keel haul somebody on that show, and it is atrocious. What what that because they do it like three times. Ah, oh, thanks. What is no bad enough? <laughs> Yeah, it's it's a rough. It Ugh. it's pretty cool. They use a lot of historic historic pirates in that one, yeah. like um, all the Treasure Planet, Treasure Planet, ha, ah, Treasure Island pirates like Billy Bones and yeah. um, Flint and all them are in there. And then they use uh, some true pirate and pirate history pirate names. So they've got a good combination of you know movie story pirates and then real. Pirates. Yeah, because I know Toby Stevens is of that, um, Maggie Smith's son. He yeah. went from playing a pirate to playing Poseidon and Percy Jackson. He just, I guess, loves the water. <laughs> I love that show. Percy Jackson's pretty good. Don't give me, dude, I could rant about how much I loved that show after being such a book fan. But Yeah, see, again, I'm a book, I'm, I, I read all the books, too. We have too. to get to the photos, see? Andrea. Yeah, we have to get to the photos. We'll, Another we'll, show. We'll, we can do a <laughs> Percy Jackson episode, too, because I love yep. that stuff. All right, here oh we my go. Oh my gosh, that was so long ago. <laughs> well, said, um, Kelly went Kelly went digging. Yeah, that was at ABC when I first started doing um, the geek track. Well, even yeah. when you first started, you looked amazing. Oh, thank you. Oh my gosh. Yeah, that's one of my favorites. Uh, uh, toy Robot cosplay. Uh, toy Robot photography did oh, that one. Daryl. Mm -hmm. Yell's husband. <laughs> mm -hmm. We love Toy yeah, Robot that's his photography. Picture. Yeah, that's his picture, and that is uh, 
Oh, look, there's Mike. <laughs> I love her. I love Indiana Jones. I had a dog named Indy. Does that, if that tells you anything. <laughs> I love your, your outerwear in this one. That's yes. so pretty. The, that, the black that coat is long. It goes down the back. So it's got nice. a big long tail to it. And there's that Dramatic. hat again. <laughs> yeah, that was, uh, that was at MCFC quite a few years ago. Oh, yep. No, say Mark Shaper photography down there. I haven't yep. seen Mark Shaper in years. He's done some really great photography for us yep. before, too. Yep. yep. Um, Good guy. Yep. That was at the Ren Fair. Uh, that was out at Shelby Farms. That was the second year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we don't have our, our local one anymore. No, it was fun. We had a good time. We ran, uh, we had uh, Buccaneer Bay and um, I helped at Buccaneer Bay and, and did some of the few bartending, not real bartending because we didn't have alcohol, but we did serve like non-alcoholic beverages, but that guy was super <laughs> fun. I loved hanging out with him. You and of course got my Scottish people. in there. Yes, hot girl. You were actually dressed as Hawk Curl the first time I ever met you at the Redbirds game, the superhero night when I, I first went that. to Hawk yes. Hawk Girl's yeah. one of my favorites. I'm I'm gonna go yeah. meet Maria next uh in June. She's gonna be in Nashville. The Justice League's going it's gonna be in Nashville. That's awesome. Yeah. So I'm gonna go meet yeah, her. So I can't whenever I think I always think Hawk Girl and Harley Quinn for you because Oh thanks. You know, because we all know I'm not I'm not a big fan of Harley Quinn, but the version you do, the original gotta be the OG Harlequin Harley Quinn yeah. from the animated series is what I think of when I think of Harley and you do her oh, so thanks. well. That and means a lot when you, Jowers, when you and Jowers get together, it's over. Are you gonna be are you gonna be at Selmer? Yes. Me and Jowers. Me and Jowers yeah. are teaming up for Selmer. We'll be there. Yep. Oh, yeah. we're going to have to get video and share that because nobody jokers like Jowers. <laughs> nobody does. That's he's amazing. I can't. Yeah. I'm going to go and see him at Ren Fair um, in Franklin. There's a Ren Fair yeah. every weekend in yeah, Frank. Um, uh, well, it's uh, right outside Franklin. It's really not in Franklin, but um, the Tennessee Middle Middle Tennessee Renaissance Fair. You can look it up online. Um, Tennessee's and, full of Ren Fairs. Yeah, that's the closest one, I think. I think that's yeah. the closest one to us. I think um, it's every Brian weekend in May. Going to. Yeah, yeah, Brian Hope talking weekend about going. And I was yeah, like, pirate. well, if I can swing it? Maybe. Yeah, Pirate Weekend is the third weekend. And, of course, that's when I'm going. And uh, Jowers will be there. He's going to be in Mermaid Coat. Yeah. With Megan. Yes. I, I just kind of want to see Jowers put on a mermaid tail just because I think it would be hilarious and he'd do it. You know he would do it. He and would he, do it. In and he would tell you he was the hottest mermaid out there. You know it, oh, and he okay. would be him, him, and then uh, James Fike. <laughs> you know they would both do it. Yes, they would. <laughs> they would do it. And we've also had both of them on the show in the past. So, yeah. yep. Yeah. Uh, I enjoyed great. those. <laughs> yeah, I do want to make sure we get to our guest submissions here. Yes. Yep. Or so. Yeah, we have a few. Oh, nice. Sandman this cosplay. Is, I like Ooh. that. We love the pose it. is excellent also. It is. The, that is the, he's got I the attitude. He's got the attitude and I like it. Pirate. Knight's cosplay that has been commenting. This is him. I met him at um, Corinth earlier this year. And I've seen him at several cons since then. And I he had keeps a, adding to this and updating it. It looks so good. So I, had good I had a dog named Ezio. I had a dog named Ezio. Like. All of this, he's got like the real leather work. His sword, he's been oh, getting nice. autographed by various voice actors and everything. So that's pretty freaking cool. I that's love the balancing the sword on his palm. Yeah, hey, I, I know her. Cool. We all know. We all know. Angel. I know her. The um, the bottom right picture is an actual flintlock pistol that somebody let her use for pictures while we were in Tupelo. Nice. And it it was. I mean, that thing was heavy. It was a. It was a. Oh, yeah. a weighty gun. Yep. But you know, we all, we love Angel around here, our other pirate. Yep. I know Angel well. Known her for My years. Offered to loan me his flintlock for this. And I was like, it would just be sitting beside me. And his is like we functioning. And I'm like, I don't I don't it, it it's great for pictures, but sitting it just would have been out of frame and it wouldn't have mattered. So. Yeah, exactly. That's what I was thinking. Oh and nice. Kelly, Kelly met her um 
what'd she say what con unfortunately this cosplayer doesn't have any social media for us to tag but she goes by turtle dove and kelly asked her if she could take her picture and share it on our pirate episode so it looks great what that looks fantastic. Was it? It's the convention that she was at while I was at the same weekend as Indiana Comic Con. I might get. Hold and, on. She told me in the chat. Hold on. I'm going to find it because I forgot and I'm not right. going to forget. It's just so funny. Gary Kelly Khan. and I. Gary Khan. Yeah. So Kelly and I were both posting photos from our shared cosplay page from two different cons and everybody thought we were together that weekend. And then they're, they're like, like, why do you photos of the this? two of you? Which, okay, that's. Literally, one of our friends that we used to see a lot more frequently when we went to Metropolis every year saw me at um, Memphis Comic Expo this past year. This past, what was it, October or late September? Yeah, or September. Right, September. September. He walked up to me and he said, Crayley, did it hurt? And I was like, did what like, hurt? Like, and he like, says, are we doing this? I was like, did what hurt? I mean, I've known him forever, so I already know he's not trying to pick me up. He's married and everything. Like, he goes, did it hurt? And I'm like, did what hurt? He's like, when they separated you and Kelly at the hip for you to be here. I was just like, <laughs> I think that's become me and Holly. Like, it's to the point now if somebody sees me or her and they don't see the other one, they're like, where's your friend? And I think people that don't know us because she and I are together so much are beginning to assume we might be a lesbian couple. <laughs> everybody, not everybody, but a lot of people think Kelly and I are a lesbian couple too, which is not I'm liked like, by the fact that one, sometimes we shorten cosplay partner to partner. And so then all people hear is my partner and they assume yeah. romantic partner. And two, <laughs> I gender bend like the main character if the main character is like a man or if there's like a himbo yeah. character or whatever sometimes. And so then we take couple photos because whatever, they're a couple. And, and so like- I mean, yeah. you're comfortable enough with your friend to do these pictures. Like, that's why I said, I was like, we were running around Huntsville last weekend. I'm like, a lot of these people that don't know us, because we were dressed as Black Widow and Captain Carter, and even though they're just, like, friends in the in the What If show, it's kind of like people are, like, shipping them together. I'm like, people probably think that you're my girlfriend. <laughs> and I'm like, you know what? If it keeps the weirdos away, let them think you're my girlfriend. <laughs> if it works. <laughs> I looked at her, I said, but I said, you know what? We're a hot couple, at least. <laughs> Yeah, me and like Kelly too. Are. Like we took, I, I gender bent Daredevil, and we did Daredevil and Jessica Jones one time, and we were like, whatever, let's let's also just make them be dating. And so we made like lipstick prints on her cheek and stuff <laughs> like that. Like we didn't actually do anything yeah. that affectionate, but we made it look like it for the photos. We we're like, oh, whatever. Yeah. So I like we can't really blame people for thinking we're a couple, but we're not. <laughs> you know, I'm like, you know what? At least it's my best friend and not somebody that I don't like that you think I'm in a relationship with. Yeah. I'm over here. Holly is as straight as they come, and I am as asexual as they come. So <laughs> we're just kind of existing together. It's yeah. like, and okay, I love the, the what they used to say in the Jay and Silent Bob stuff. We're hetero life mates. <laughs> Hey, it works. Yeah, Kelly and I like to say that we're platonic soulmates. So and you know, I feel you can have a platonic soulmate. I really Definitely. do. Because Definitely. why is why is your only soulmate have to be somebody you're you're romantically in love with? Why can't you exactly. be just in love with some love has so many types? Why not a pl platonic soulmate? Definitely. Why not? I mean, right. look, we were earlier talking about the pirate men getting married on the ship together so that you know the other one was taken care of if something yeah. happened. Yeah, and definitely. Then, hey, look, the samurai, if you get really back into Japanese history, it was considered very okay. Like, as long as you weren't cheating around, it's like if you stayed with that one person forever, even if you were married, they're like, that is a very valid relationship. So here we go. Yep. You know, All I different could, I, I could, you know, I could get on my, my, also my LGBTQ soapbox, but <laughs> we'll save that for June for Pride. <laughs> Yeah. Well, and also like cosplayers, especially because we meet so many people like oh, yeah. I think I think people who travel a lot or do a lot of character work or whatever and meet people in like different contexts other than just you go to work, you go home. Yeah. And higher numbers. I think we're actually kind of privileged to feel more and more of those types of love and care for people like there's a Hosier song called Someone New where the main li line of the course is I fall in love a little bit every day with someone new. And the bridge is in love with every stranger. The stranger, the better. Yeah. 
And no, okay. the, I the just, stranger the better is definitely a cosplayer thing. Yeah, I listened to this and I'm like, I don't know if this is what he meant, but I feel like this is cosplay families where we're just you're, like... You're allowed to interpret the lyrics how you see them. Yep. I mean, we all we all just kind of get connection, like we were talking about earlier, being the con mom. You you make a con family, you know, you have your, your con kids, your con parents, you have your con boyfriend, your con girlfriend. Yeah. Well, I'm, the weird, I'm the con mom and the weird con aunt. Um, and what better episode? The, the of- one that bothers me was when one of my con kids has a con kid and their con kid refused to learn my name and just referred to me as con grandma. It was funny <laughs> the first time, but, but after- all weekend. <laughs> yeah, not learning my name. I'm like, mm-hmm. my name is very easy. If you want to use my real name or my nickname, Andrea or Annie, either one are very easy to say, or you can even use my cosplay name. But no, it was just Con Grandma. You're 19 years old. Please stop calling me Con Grandma. Oh, <laughs> she's pushing your buttons. I, I Well, the, the kid was autistic a little bit. So I feel like maybe she just couldn't register that it was bothering me. Even I was like, hey, my name's Andrea. Or, you know, V calls me Annie. I'm like, yeah. you know, and they kept saying V and Chrissy kept saying Annie and this kid just refused. And I don't know if it was, I feel like part of it was the autism. Definitely. You know, like she was hyper fixating on the, you know, that was their con mom and I was the con mom's con mom. And it just kind of started out funny. And then by Sunday, I was just like, okay, it's not funny anymore. It's yeah. just not funny anymore. I was like, yeah, but you know, we have our, I'm, I'm the weird cat mom con aunt you know here we are i have this demon cat wanting in in and out of my lap he keeps thinking that it's about him because it It is is. because it is who needs kids when you have cats that's true this is one of andrea's two cats that always tries to sneak into my my suitcase when i leave her house oh i'm guessing thor is the other Thor is the other one yeah loki's like all right i love you get out of my house (laughs) Which is a very low-key thing to do. Yeah, my little monsters. Well, we are coming up on just a few minutes left, and I want to make sure Heidi has ample time. So we are going to give you the solo screen in a second here, and we would love for you to tell the audience what your advice is to people who are first getting into, like, pirate cosplay specifically, or just what you think your best advice is, even for veterans. Like, please give us your signature piece of, Pirate cosplay of wisdom. Advice. Okay. Exactly. It. So here you are. Hey. <laughs> so <laughs> um, what I would really, really stress, I think in any, actually this to me goes to, to any cosplay is definitely find something you're passionate about because when you're passionate about it, you speak truthfully about it and it comes over to uh, other people. And they really see the, your passion about it. So um, any like the stories we were talking about, your backstory, um, your name, which can be really, really important. Um, things like that. The, you need to be passionate and, and pick things that you can definitely relay to that to them. And your character comes off more as a genuine character instead of trying to be uh, doesn't seem like you're being something you're not. So to me, passion would be my number one thing. When you pick your name, your backstory, make sure that it's something that you relate to, that you're passionate about. Thank you so much. Let me. Sure. You know, passion is literally something that hasn't really been mentioned. So that is a great new piece of advice. Yep. Yep. And it just, it, it comes across. I mean, you can, you, in your, in your story and everything, because it's something that you truly feel strongly about. So it comes across as being genuine. Love it. That is really great advice. Yeah. Um, yeah. So uh, we also want to know, since we're like one minute away from ending the show here, are we on time? <gasps> Without <laughs> Kelly? Kelly wasn't even here to make us be on time. Okay, we can't freak out about it, though, or we'll run too far over. Yeah, you will. (laughs) Where can we find you and follow your excellent cosplay work? Um, On uh, Instagram. I'm otherwise known as 4H. It's funny. All of my cosplays have H names. Figure that one out. (laughs) I'm Captain Hawk. I'm Harley. I'm Agent Hill. And I'm Hawk Girl. So, And my real name is? 
Heidi. So um, actually somebody gave me that name and he still calls me 4-H. So it kind of stuck. Um, uh, otherwise, 4-H is is what I am on Instagram and on uh, Facebook. Um, Heidi Curtis Smith, which is my real name. Right. And lovely. you're lovely on the Internet, too. We've been been friends for a while there now. And you're just. Yeah. Real She's lovely, lovely in person, person on the Internet. We love I, we're. Checks in the bank, baby. I'm sending you the treasure for sure. It's my, it's my, I'm sending you mine. It's my heart. Oh, I miss Aww. you. We'll have, we'll see each other next weekend at least. Yep. Yep. I'll see you in summer. Yeah. So you can find Andrea, Kelly, and I, if you go to linktree.com slash cosplay cafe podcast. So Andrea is media rise on Instagram mostly. And Kelly and I are all those Phoenix sisters buttons on there. Um, so you can find our cosplay stuff there. You can find different ways to get in touch with us. So if you want to be on the show, if you need some cosplay encouragement, anything like that, we're pretty friendly. They are most <laughs> of the time. And if one of us is having a bad day, Hey, there's two others of us. Exactly. So you make sure you reach out. Thank you so much to everybody in the audience. You've all been great. We didn't get to every episode. single comment, but we do <laughs> look at all of them. They're all still there for us. Oh, and Evermore did post a link to some of his work. So if you're watching this on Facebook, you can scroll Perfect. up and get that. We were talking Thank about you. his punk stuff. Thank so, you. Yeah, yeah. I am going to I'm gonna play us out. And by play us out, I mean I'm going to put on the video that our network had made. <laughs> yeah. Bye. Bye. It's like Coca-Cola, Levi's